let's start. Um, today is our final uh, lecture. And um, after this lecture, uh, you will have one more test. Uh, as usual, short test with, uh, sorry, of 10 um, questions. And um, uh, if uh, you have, uh, um, if uh, all of your tests are quite good, uh, so um, you won't be, um, you, you, you don't uh, need uh, to, to do some presentations or to read some articles uh, to the final uh, exam after a week or maybe uh, after two weeks um, if um, you won't have enough time to prepare. And uh, so I'll tell you your possible uh, marks and uh, if you want to increase them, you can prepare some uh, article on the uh, topic of our course and um, you should, we will discuss this article with you as an, as an exam. And um, today, um, is, uh, today we will discuss different states of mind and there will be um, three parts, uh, main parts, and uh, one more uh, short discussion. So states of mind, or what do we mean when we uh, tell about states of mind, uh, productivity, uh, altered states, and some uh, practice. Okay, so uh, usually we tell about states of uh, mind, of mental states, or um, states of consciousness, and so on. So we use different, um, different words uh, to define almost the same. And, um, but in, uh, we, we um, use different definitions of these states of mind in different um, in different fields. For example, uh, in medicine, we uh, usually have uh, some practical task to determine whether a person is in, in a coma or whether it's possible to communicate with him. So the uh, practical problem in medicine is how to determine the state of a person by physiological indicators. Um, so uh, in medicine, we have uh, some kind of these uh, states of consciousness, with different levels of consciousness, uh, wakefulness, and awareness. Uh, but uh, in general, we also call uh, in emo that emotions are states uh, of our mind, and and uh, emotions are biological, biological states associated with the neural system brought on by neurophysiological changes, whereas they are associated with thoughts, feelings, behavioral responses, and a degree of pleasure and displeasure. And uh, there is currently no scientific consensus on a definition of emotions. So emotions are often <laughs> Interwind with mood, uh, temperament, personality, disposition, creativity, and motivation. Um, some of you, um, maybe some of you uh, heard about uh, Paul Ekman's research. So, um, have you heard anything about Paul Ekman? No? Uh, I have uh, like an idea that maybe from the facial features, you can say what's the people like, you know, what's his emotion or something like that. I feel he's a good man, a bad man, happy, sad. Okay. Um, so um, maybe <clears throat> you have watched a film, uh, Lie to Me. So have you? No? 
Um, it's a uh, oh. okay. So uh, Paul Ekman was a consultant of this film, and this uh, um, I think it, it's serious. Uh, and uh, so this mo movie is about a guy who can um, who can understand if you lie to him or not. Very very good. Um, just uh, using the definitions of your uh, face uh, muscle tensions. And uh, Paul Ekman worked uh, at the California Institute and um, he uh, conducted research on evolutionary movements and facial expressions. And uh, in 1965, he received a grant from the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and uh, he pioneered to study facial expressions and emotions. Uh, so uh, he uh, traveled to Papua New Guinea to study the nonverbal behavior of isolated tribes living in the Stone Age, and uh, his research confirmed. Darwin's belief that facial expressions are universal. So there are the same uh, facial uh, expressions for uh, people for kind of wild tribes and for uh, people who live in cities and so on. And uh, subsequently, uh, Ekman together with uh, Friesen first developed the only comprehensive tool for objective measurement of facial movements, the facial coding system or FACS, uh, which was published in 1978. Uh, but uh, there is a little problem with uh, this research because uh, now we know that there are the same facial expressions for uh, people in different parts of the earth and for uh, ancient tribes and for people uh, who lived in big cities, but we still, um, we, we don't know um, if people use the same facial expressions for different emotions, because emotions um, are um, a, a little bit uh, subjective. And um, also uh, in this uh, book and uh, in some articles, Lisa Feldman Barrett um, showed her own opinion uh, on the uh, how, how emotions are made. And uh, she uh, expressed here an idea that uh, emotions, they have um, parts connected with evolution and connected with um, some physiological uh, things, and there is a part connected with uh, culture. And um, if you're interested in emotions, uh, I think this reading will be quite useful uh, for you. And now there are different um, classifications of emotions. For example, in the classification of uh, parrot, uh, primary emotions are distinguished, uh, which are subdivided into secondary ones. And uh, there are classifications in which two or three vectors are distinguished according to which all emotions are decomposed. And the uh, circumplex model of emotions uh, on the right side was developed by uh, James Russell. And this model suggests that emotions are distributed in the uh, two-dimensional um, circular space containing arousal and uh, balanced dimensions. So there is uh, activation, deactivation dimension, and pleasant, unpleasant um, dimension. For example, happiness is when you're pleasant and um, a little bit active. And for example, um, mm -hmm. for example, um, 
word uh, is uh, ha has more from deactivation and from unpleasant or like this also the same so arousal represents the vertical axis and balance represents the horizontal axis while the center of the circle represents a neutral balance and a medium uh, level of arousal and um, also um, there are so some other models uh, of emotions for example three-dimensional model when uh, we have one more um, axis dominance and um, we also have uh, arousal and uh, pleasant and pleasant uh, axis here uh, one more model of emotion is a uh, model which was introduced by robert Plushik, and he offers a three-dimensional model uh, that is a hybrid of both basic complex categories and uh, dimensional theories and it arranges emotions in a, a concentric uh, circles where inner circles are more basic and uh, outer circles more complex and um, notably uh, outer circles uh, are also formed by blending their inner circles emotions and uh, Pluchik models as wrestles emanates from a circumplex representation where emotional words were plotted based on similarity. And Pluchik believes that each basic emotion triggers one of the evolutionary strategies or behavior. So uh, he has uh, some kind of theory <clears throat> of basic emotions. And there are uh, 10 postulates in this uh, theory, but uh, the main idea is that uh, emotions are connected with some evolutionary strategies. Mm. One more interesting scheme connected to emotions was made by Lofheim, and uh, we usually called it Lofheim cube of emotions. And uh, there are three axes here, uh, and the names of axes are uh, connected with the uh, neuromediators. So there is a serotonin axis, dopamine axis, and noradrenaline axis. And uh, this model is uh, quite, quite similar to uh, this one, uh, but um, Lofheim doesn't tell us that there is uh, such um, such strong connection between, for example, serotonin and pleasant and pleasant noradrenaline and um, um, arousal and dominance and dopamine. And um, a review of the theories of emotions said that there are three key criteria for mental experience that relate to emotions. So uh, the first one is that um, we have a strongly motivating subjective quality like pleasure or pain. Second, um, that uh, mm, there is a response to some event or object that is either real or imagined at the emotions they are motivate particular kinds of behavior. So these are, are some criteria of different um, classifications uh, so, of, of emotions. And now uh, let's move on to productivity. Uh, so what is productivity? What do you think? Have you got any your own definitions? What is productivity for you? So, any ideas? We can break it down to the verb produce. So, mm -hmm. when you produce something, you are productive. Okay. So, um, yeah, the. That's uh, that's 
That's right. And um, usually we used uh, this word productivity for, uh, for example, for uh, building houses or uh, for um, working with some, um, some things uh, concrete. But uh, when we work, for, for example, uh, in office or when we do some research, uh, that's a uh, level of ability and will required for doing something. Oh, okay. Uh, also quite, quite interesting definition. Uh, but now um, different uh, people uh, define uh, this word productivity in different meanings because, for example, if you are a manager or if you are a researcher or uh, I don't know, maybe uh, if you have your own business, what is productivity for you? Because, uh, for example, manager, um, he doesn't produce uh, something by himself, but uh, he needs uh, some inspiration, some ideas, and so on. And uh, we had uh, a research of productivity, and um, yeah, but uh, usually people use these uh, definitions of productivity is the ability of a person to produce a certain amount of time or perform a certain number of actions. So this is usual uh, definition. But uh, when we had a research of productivity and we asked uh, people who took part in the research, what is productivity for them? Because uh, they uh, usually worked in some in intellectual um, uh, projects and uh, it was quite hard to define uh, this word for them. And they said that productivity is um, attentiveness, concentration, it's the ability to produce significant results over a long period of time, uh, did what planned, satisfied with the results, uh, when you desire uh, much the way you work. Uh, and a very interesting definition is that productivity is about feeling good and connected with the universe when there are new ideas and answers. Um, uh, I love the last uh, much. So, and um, I try to, to, uh, to ask uh, for questions, uh, for example, for my uh, job, when I want to be productive. And these questions are what for, uh, what, how, and uh, how are you feeling? Um, so, and I think that, of course, the first one is uh, the most important. So, uh, when, when you want to be productive, uh, first of all, you should think about the goals uh, of uh, your work. So, what for? Uh, and Maybe I think all of you heard about uh, SMART. It's a mnemonic acronym giving a criteria to guide in the setting of um, objectives, for example, in project management. And um, the letter S and M generally mean specific and measurable. Possibly the most common version has the remaining letters referring to achievable, achievable relevant, and time bound. So um, if, you want, if you want to be quite motivated, your goals should be uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and um, it should be achieved in certain period of time. So uh, for example, mm, let's play a small game. Uh, I'll tell you some uh, goals and you'll tell me uh, are they smart uh, or not okay uh, so uh, I want to win uh, so my, my goal is to win a Nobel Prize is it a smart goal or not no no why no well you see you just said what you want but you didn't say if it's we can achieve that measurable in like you're not being realistic you're just being dreamy 
Oh, it might it might be realistic. Why well, I'm uh, I do science, uh, so maybe I I achieve this goal. How many of those who is doing science actually achieved this Nobel Prize? Like one oh, percent, less than one percent. So th this goal is um, hasn't got the last uh, property. So uh, for example, um, I will achieve a Nobel Prize uh, after um, so in uh, I don't know twenty forty for example after twenty years. You so, don't even know if you live enough to do that. I mean, I wish you live and get the Nobel Prize. I'm just being realistic with you. So for me now, not a prize is not at all. It's not a smart. Okay. Um, so uh, to um, to have an order on, on the table uh, tomorrow, is it a smart goal or not? No, I don't think so. Why? Because it's something routine that shouldn't be planned for. Shouldn't be overthought about. Um, so which property uh, don't, don't we have in uh, this example? Okay, so do we have some certain time? I think the time is the most one that's suitable here. And so we have time tomorrow. Is it realistic? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's quite achievable. And is it measurable? Um, don't think so. Yeah, that, that's not uh, measurable and not really specific. Because uh, what does it mean have an order on my table? Maybe it means that, uh, I don't know, uh, my, my pants should be in order or something else. So that, that's not very measurable. Okay. Uh, so uh, the correct setting of a specific visualized uh, goal that you really want to achieve is the main thing in productivity. So I think so. Um, as you know from the previous lesson, uh, the brain demands a reward in the form of dopamine and dopamine is released in anticipation of uh, specific goals. And so uh, if you have specific goals and you achieve these specific goals, you have uh, dopamine and uh, vice versa. And um, poor goals setting can lead you to learn a help helplessness. So this is a phenomenon that has been studied uh, in dogs. Uh, when the dog tried to do something in negative conditions, but uh, didn't get the result, um, it eventually stopped even trying. So the same happens when we set non-specific or uh, unattainable goals. And um, according to one study, productivity is higher for those employers uh, who set their own goals. So uh, do not wait for someone to come up with a task for you and be more active with choosing uh, your own goals. Okay, uh, so the next question uh, I uh, ask is what? So um, if you have decided on the question uh, what for, you need to understand uh, what should you do? So for, uh, for this, uh, people usually make up to-do lists. Uh, in the book of Diamond Zahardis, uh, he gives statistics that 41% uh, of to-do list items are never uh, completed. 15% of cases are completed within one day. 
uh, 18 of cases are completed within one hour and 10% of cases are completed within a minute. So uh, why is it happening? Uh, it's happening because uh, to-do lists uh, don't work. And um, why our to-do lists usually don't work? Uh, because we create a list without thinking about the goal. Uh, we do not specify a deadline. Our to-do lists are too long. Um, our lists are heterogeneous. Uh, we have a hard time prioritizing. Uh, we do not provide details about each task. Our tasks can be too ambitious and um, our tasks are not uh, tied to a specific goal. And uh, this is a, um, some example of good to-do lists and uh, bad to-do lists. For example, a get life in order. Um, so we have got some specific time and it's not measurable. Uh, and uh, all, all the, mm, this is quite, uh, all, all the tasks are quite different because cleaning box is very simple. And for example, um, plant bedding is uh, quite huge. Um, and maybe this, uh, this one is uh, much better. Uh, because all uh, tasks are um, quite similar. Okay, and uh, if you want to choose the best method of writing lists for yourself, uh, read the book of David Allen. Uh, in general, the recipe is simple, so uh, do not write lists with all of your tasks. Uh, choose one important and different task for the day, for example, to do uh, an algebra task and a couple of simpler tasks, perhaps a few very simple actions such as searing or on a bus. Um, yeah. There are different strategies, but there is something in common. Okay, uh, the next uh, question is uh, how? Um, my answer is that uh, you should be, uh, you should concentrate on your uh, tasks, on, on your problems. And uh, it's not quite a good strategy uh, to do many tasks at the same time. So the first idea is that simply switching between tasks creates uh, additional stress. So this study uh, looked at switching to email, social media, internet, and so on. And it was shown that when the number of switches was too high, um, heart rate variability decreased. And this parameter uh, indicates the level of stress. So uh, the lower heart rate variability, the higher the level of stress. Uh, there is also a number of studies on multitasking. So the conclusions are uh, as follows. When students are given an assignment, for example, to read a text uh, and answer questions, and students are given a preliminary assignment to write messages, um, students cope uh, worse than those who were not distracted. And uh, there is a research, um, one more research, which is not only phenomenological, but uh, the research is connected with the work of the brain during uh, multitasking. For example, uh, here, uh, scientists have tried to find a bottleneck in productivity, uh, which prevents the brain from performing several tasks uh, at a time. And they realize that uh, it was the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, so it's here, uh, the part of the cortex that, that corresponds to a high level of integration. And um, it turns out that when switching, the, um, there was a delay of 
one second. So here you can see uh, it's single task and dual task. Um, in ordinary task, this is not enough. So one second is a quite short period of time. And when you, for example, read something, one second is, is not um, su such a big time. But uh, for example, if you are driving a car, uh, one second can be quite, quite a huge. And when you do uh, different tasks at a time, uh, in fact, you switch uh, your attention uh, many, many times. And uh, so you add the second uh, many times. Um, OK, and what is the best way to uh, fill yourself when uh, you work? So uh, not worth reading the news because the news agenda influence uh, a person's picture of the world and use expands the field of dangerous events. So usually news uh, are not uh, very positive and they are quite negative and they also increase your level of stress. And um, it was shown that people who watch the news had a higher level of uh, situa situation and excited. And uh, why are why, why is it bad to be in stress uh, during your work? So um, um, in, in this study, um, scientists monitored participants' brain activity using um, fMRI when um, participants navigated uh, in virtual cities. And after the participants familiarized themselves with the city, the researchers uh, warned some of the participants uh, that they could receive a slight electric shock. And participants who were under stress choose a familiar and suboptimal route while participants who were not stressed found a new optimal road. Uh, uh, regarding uh, stress, there is a well-known Kirk's Dodson uh, law, uh, but that, that's not uh, mm, really about uh, stress, but you can be uh, you can receive a slight electric shock, but it's uh, more about uh, arousal. And um, originally, it is a, an empirical law, and this law says that working capacity increases with mental arousal uh, to a certain limit and then begins to decrease. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, relationship has been studied in connection with glucocorticoids um, and glucocorticoids are um, so uh, it was shown that the memory performance are connected with the circulating levels of glucocorticoids and uh, the there is a graph uh, almost like on, uh, on uh, Gerd's dots and law. So th there is some uh, biochemistry explanation of uh, this law. And finally, to be productive and uh, plan your day well, you need to get enough sleep. So uh, even McKinsey, uh, according to the research, uh, uh, American companies lose about uh, $63 billion uh, per year uh, to sleepy employers. And um, now, um, one more thing uh, about uh, some strange uh, um, 
mental states. So um, it's a flow state. So uh, have you heard about uh, flow, flow state? No? Nope. Okay. Uh, so this uh, state made by Mikhail Csikszent Mihai uh, in uh, 1975. Uh, so the concept has been widely referred to flow state across a variety of fields. Um, through the concept has been claimed to have excited for thousands of years uh, under other names. And uh, the flow of states shares many characteristics with hyperfocus. Um, and so uh, in um, there are some core characteristics of uh, this uh, uh, flow of states. But um, when you have uh, flow states, um, you, you don't understand uh, what is the time now. So your, um, all your brain uh, is in, in some certain uh, problem. And uh, usually uh, flow, flow states can be connected with uh, clear goals, you know, immediate feedbacks, uh, very intensively focused attention. It can be connected with risk, sense of control, and so on. That's why um, uh, some um, people who do um, ex extreme uh, sports, they can have a flow, a flow state, uh, but sometimes people who do some um, intellectual or creative work also can be in flow states. And um, if we uh, use such diagram, when we have skill level on X and challenge level on um, um, second uh, axis, so a uh, flow state is when you have a uh, quite high skill level and a uh, high challenge level. So um, when you have very high uh, skill level and uh, simple task, it's uh, relaxation. When you have low skill level and um, very hard task, it's uh, an anxiety. And uh, if you have uh, low skill level and low challenge level, it's apathy. And um, when, you, when you have a uh, high level of skills and you have hard task, you should be concentrated on this task and uh, you haven't got um, resources of uh, attention or something else to do uh, to understand what is the time. Uh, so you can think about um, uh, something else except your problem, except your task. And uh, the, the state of the flow begins to be studied and um, there are some characteristics um, of uh, EEG and uh, fMRI fears and um, so on. Uh, for example, a lower alpha rhythm and a higher theta uh, rhythms are uh, noticed for EEG in flow state. And uh, now some ideas about altered state. Um, so th there are uh, some ordinary states of consciousness. Uh, they are emotions and for example, sometimes flow state, and there are some altered uh, states. So according to definition of uh, Ludwig Arnold, an altered state is a mental state induced by various physiological, 
psychological or pharmacological manners or agents uh, which can be recognized subjectively but by the individual himself uh, or by objective observer uh, as representing a sufficient deviation in subjective experience of physiological frustration from certain general norms for that individual during alert uh, waking consciousness. And um, so uh, the altered states of consciousness are um, uh, dream, meditation, trance, and hypnosis. Hypnosis. So uh, the first one is uh, meditation. Uh, there are different, um, as we discussed on the first uh, lecture, there are different types of meditation. For example, uh, focused or closed meditation and open meditation. Um, but um, there are there are many different um, investigations uh, connected with meditation, and um, I will give uh, an example of such work. For example, uh, in, maybe uh, uh, you have uh, heard from uh, some uh, meditators or uh, yogi or something like that, that you should live uh, in the moment. So you should live in the past or in, in the future, but you should be in the moment. And the uh, default mode network of the brain is associated with the wandering of the mind into the past and into the future. And um, this, uh, in this paper, um, our authors compared people who have been meditating for many, many years with people who uh, are new in meditation. And uh, it has been found that the default mode network activity of the brain is much lower uh, for experienced meditators than in ordinary people. Uh, so um, we can uh, say that um, it was shown that for um, for monks uh, who were good at uh, meditation, uh, mind wandering is much lower than for ordinary people. And at the same time, it was found that experienced meditators have a higher connection between the anterior cingulate gyrus and the medial prefrontal cortex. Thus, the network of uh, executive control or executive control network was more connected in those who meditated for a long time. So um, as you remember, executive control uh, network is connected with the um, concentration on a goal. Um, so um, the next um, altered uh, consciousness of mind is a uh, dream and some words about uh, losing dreaming because it's quite interesting. Um, and lucid dream is a type of dream where the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming. And during a lucid dream, the dreamer may gain some amount of control over the dream characters, narrative and environment. Uh, however, this is not actually necessary for a dream to be described as lucid. So, um, have you seen this uh, movie? Maybe some of you. Yeah, yes, we did. Yeah, that's uh, this about uh, lucid dreaming in some way. And uh, Stephen Laberge, he was uh, one of the first researchers of the lucid dreaming. And um, in his book on lucid dreaming, uh, there are different tips how you can start um, 
realize uh, in the dream that you are in the dream. Uh, so you should find difference between the dream environment and the situation in similar place and reality. Uh, try to close your mouth and nose uh, during breathing in the dream and so on. So there are different tips. So uh, have you ever had a lucid dreaming when you realize that you are in a dream? To get a control of a dream, I'm not sure, but to know that I'm dreaming, yes. No. Great. Um, and uh, for those uh, who haven't got such experience, um, scientists found that we can uh, stimulate our prefrontal cortex du during REM sleep um, at frequencies, uh, at, at gamma frequencies of 25 or 40 hertz. And um, the, um, the probability of uh, lucid dreaming uh, is um, uh, increased. Uh, and as a result, um, uh, they, they had uh, some kind of lucid dreamings for um, many of the subjects. And uh, this was published uh, in Nature in 2014. And another study compared two types of people who often have lucid dreams and people who rarely or almost never have uh, lucid dreams. And it turned out that in the first group of people, the activity of the anterior prefrontal cortex and the middle temporal cortex in the uh, resting state uh, is uh, higher. Another altered state of consciousness is uh, trance. And uh, trance differs from the usual state in that the focus of attention has an internal, um, so th there is an internal focus and attention and um, almost, uh, and people almost haven't got the perception of the external world. And um, there are also a small number of scientific publications on trans, for example, um, here uh, some people in trans were studied, so mediums, were studied who said that the spirits write with their hand and they wrote different texts and uh, experienced mediums uh, and novices were compared and uh, studied trans and non-trans states. And it was shown that the, the experience uh, mediums activity is lower in the left hippocampus, uh, in the left singular gyrus and in the right uh, temporal gyrus. But um, of course, this study uh, doesn't tell us uh, if um, really some spirits uh, arise with the hands of these people, just uh, uh, some differences in the brain activity. And uh, if we talk about the rhythms of the brain, uh, then in trance uh, states the delta and theta um, rhythms are usually higher while during meditation, uh, often gamma range uh, rises. One more altered state of consciousness is uh, hypnosis. And it's a human uh, condition involving focused attention, reduced peripheral awareness, and an enhanced capacity to respond to suggestion. Um, this is a quite uh, controversial state of consciousness because um, not everyone believes that the hypnosis is, exists. And there is even a hypnosis a theory that uh, this is a social influence or deception. Uh, but uh, there is a presence of 
uh, what we call hypnosis uh, for animals. And it uh, has been scientifically confirmed that, for example, uh, there is a hypnosis for hen, uh, press birds, and you can hypnotize the rabbit or a swan uh, or e even a cat. Um, and uh, there are some uh, brain researches uh, of uh, hypnosis. For example, this study looked at how color perception changes during the hypnosis. Uh, there were color uh, and black and white stimuli, and all subjects were divided into hypnotizable and non-hypnotizable. And in this suggestion, uh, it was shown that uh, during hypnosis, uh, they showed uh, a black and white stimuli and said that they were colored, the subjects changed the activity of the uh, area of the cortex, which is associated with the perception of color. And this study subjects um, underwent a scrub test and all participants performed the task under normal conditions and under hypnosis. And um, the author of, the, of this paper found that um, more susceptible people showed high activity in the anterior single gyrus than less susceptible people. And um, as you remember, anterior singular gyrus is connected with uh, critics, um, comparison, uh, subtraction, uh, finding the errors, and so on. So it's, it's quite interesting that uh, in hypnosis, the activity of uh, uh, this part of the brain uh, changes. So the, the critics uh, changes. And um, so um, why do we need different states of uh, consciousness? What, what do you think? To see different things. To see different things, yeah. To uh, I mean, it's like maybe the you know we see some specific wavelengths of light, and I guess it can be reflected to brain uh, too. Like we can see different things when we are in different states. Like we can see the the light, the mm -hmm. normal light, but we can see like a shorter wavelength or higher wavelength. So we can perceive some certain stuff in um, some state and that we cannot in others. Uh, okay, but uh, how can we change our mental state? For example, if we, um, for example, in, in anxiety or we don't uh, feel well or, um, I don't know. We, we, we don't like our mental state. How do we change it? What do you think? Like, for instance, if you are doing something, you just change. Like, if you are sitting, you walk. If you're walking, you run. Changing your current, whatever yeah. you're doing, actually. For me, like, sport change, reading, uh, music. According to what you are doing, if you're still, like, you're not feeling the momentum you can change whatever you're doing to something else i agree with you and that was one of the uh, answers but uh, here on the picture uh, you can see some specific neuron and uh, it's a mirror neuron um, maybe you have heard uh, about this type of neurons and a mirror neuron is a neuron that fire, fires both when an animal uh, or a person acts and when the animal or person observes the same action performed by another. Those 
uh, the neuron mirrors the behavior of the others um, and uh, as though the observer were itself acting. And um, it was shown that there are some mirror neurons uh, for uh, monkeys, uh, for people, and so on. And um, we usually call it the mirror um, neuron system. And uh, they are in different uh, parts of the brain. For example, if you uh, see or uh, as someone else uh, uh, acts, uh, some, do something, um, more uh, uh, mirror neurons are active in uh, uh, near motor cortex uh, when you, um, for example, uh, ha have more visual input, more uh, mirror neurons uh, are active in posterior STS and so on. And so uh, the first, the simplest way to change your mental state is um, to see uh, some, somebody with another mental state. Okay, and so these are my um, ways to change mental states. The first one, uh, as you said, uh, is to act. So when you do something, your mental cha uh, state changes. If you do exercises, sorry, uh, your mental states also uh, changes. Usually you became happier uh, and uh, you can go for a walk. So the difference between do, doing exercise and uh, when you go for a walk is that um, you have an, another visual input. Uh, you can use some triggers, for example, um, music. So for example, um, or uh, some smells. Uh, maybe uh, when you feel the smell of uh, bread, uh, last time you was happy and now you can uh, feel this uh, smell again and you uh, became happier. You can change your posture or facial expression. So when you smile, our mental state changes, we became happier. And um, you can um, you can just uh, see someone else with a different state and uh, to use your mirror neurons uh, to change your uh, mental state. So that's all for today. And uh, you already have a test um, and I'll send you a link just uh, after a minute. And um, uh, I think to the end of uh, the week, or may maybe earlier, uh, I'll send you your preliminary marks. And if you want to have a higher mark, you can read some article connected with uh, our uh, topics, connected with cognitive science or neuroscience, and um, pr present me this article after a week or after two weeks.